The story starts with high school student Isagi, who planned to win an important soccer tournament in order to become a great national player. He managed to create a chance to win the match. Suddenly, his coach told Isagi to pass the ball to his teammate, Teda. He couldn't score a goal, and their opponent, Kira, got the ball. He managed to score a goal, and Isagi's school lost against them. Tada said sorry for not scoring the goal, and Kira was named Jewel of Japanese soccer team. Kira was celebrated as a star, and reporters wanted to know what he said about the victory. In addition, he was called the Jewel of Japanese soccer, and Isagi was frustrated. Afterwards, the coach said that they should be proud of their performance as a team, but Isagi was angry. In the evening, he was on the way home, and he wanted to give up his dream of being a soccer player. Then he remembered seeing Noah Europe's best player shoot a volley on TV. He admired Noah ever since, and wanted to become a superstar like him. Unfortunately, his dream of becoming a star striker for the national team could not come true. Then he remembered the moment and he regretted not scoring the goal himself. Also he wondered if his fate would have been different if he had scored the goal himself. Suddenly he started screaming out his frustration, and Asagi cried in anger. When he got home he told his parents that they had lost, and his mother had already prepared dinner. He also found out about a letter, and he has been selected to become a certified athlete. The following day, Isagi wondered if he was in the right place. Kira showed up, and he said that Isagi played great in yesterday's match. Then they walked into the building together, and Isagi was surprised that Kira was so nice. After entering the building, they were shocked to see hundreds of guys. Kira immediately noticed that there were many famous athletes there. Following this, Igo Jinpachi introduced himself, who was hired to make sure Japan wins the World Cup. Isagi wondered what Jinpachi was up to, and Kira thought that Isagi knew the man. Jinpachi then explained that he planned to perform an experiment to turn one of the 300 athletes here in the building to the best striker in the world. In addition, he explained about his project called Blue Lock, where they live and undergo a top training. He promised that the last one standing could become the best striker in the world. Suddenly, Kira started complaining because he can't abandon his team. Some others agreed with him, but Jinpachi said that those people who are not interested in becoming the best striker in the world can leave the building. At that moment, they realized that Jinpachi doesn't talk nonsense, and he asked the 300 athletes what soccer was about. He said that soccer is not about team play, but about scoring goals. Suddenly, Kira became angry because he insulted his role models, and he said that Jinpachi was wrong. He replied that Japan Nationals team had never won a World Cup, and he told them about superstar Noel. Then he began to list other top strikers who had already won the World Cup. Finally, Jinpachi said that you will never be the world's best striker unless you're the world's biggest egoist. After Jinpachi said these words, Isagi couldn't forget his dream to become a superstar. Jinpachi also said that they had to imagine being able to score a goal at the crucial moment. Following this, the door to the Blue Lock project was opened, and Isagi knew it was his chance. He wanted to become the world's best striker and decided to listen to his ego. After Isagi decided to take part in the Blue Lock project, he managed to convince everyone else too. A short time later, the 300 strikers were brought to the Blue Lock building to begin the project. Isagi was assigned rank 299, and he was looking for Room Z. In Room Z, he was glad to see Kira, but another guy accidentally threw his shirt on him. Following this, he almost stepped on a guy who was sleeping on the floor. Later, Isagi met Igarashi, and Isagi learned that his family runs a temple. Suddenly, the screen turned on and Jinpachi told them about the rules of Blue Lock. They learned that the number on their uniform corresponded to their current rank. In addition, they learned that their rank can change based on the results, and the top five will be registered as forwards for the U-20 World Cup. After that, Jinpachi said that anyone who loses in Blue Lock will never be allowed to play for Japan, and a ball appeared in the room. He told them to play tag with it, and the last one who is the Oni after 136 seconds will be locked off. As a result, Igarashi started the game and he selected Isagi as his target. Isagi managed to dodge and Kira wanted to prove Jinpachi wrong. Meanwhile, Igarashi was desperately trying to make a person an Oni and he noticed that Bachira was sleeping. Suddenly he kicked Igarashi in his face and he complained about his foul. Kunigami told him to play fair, but he was hit with the ball. Kunigami was angry and he wanted to destroy Igarashi, but he used Isagi as a shield. As a result, Isagi was injured and he became an Oni. He didn't want to be eliminated by Blue Lock and started to launch his attack. Then he tried to pursue Igarashi, who was on the last rank. Isagi realized that his time was running out 
and he didn't want his dream to end. Suddenly Bachira held Kunigami, and he offered him a chance to survive. After Bachira was thrown at Igarashi, Igarashi injured his leg. This gave Isagi his chance to survive, and he knew that by doing so, he would end Igarashi's soccer career. Before he shot the ball, he decided against it because he wanted to change. He wanted to be the best striker and decided to hunt the strongest soccer player. Bachira said that he likes his attitude and took the ball from him to chase the strongest one. However, he started chasing Kira, and Bachira passed to Isagi in the last seconds. Kira thought he was safe, but Isagi's striker instincts kicked in and he attacked the strongest guy. Then we see Henri telling the other members of the Japan Football Union that Japan will never win the World Cup if their strategies don't change. Hirotoshi replied that soccer is just business, and he didn't think Japan ever had a chance of winning the World Cup. Then she said that Igo Jinpachi is in the process of creating a player who can win the World Cup. Meanwhile, Kira was shocked that Isagi destroyed him and replied that he doesn't know what happened. Jinpachi said that the loser is disqualified and Kira was shocked. Then Kira said he is more talented than Isagi and he didn't know what the game tag had to do with soccer. So Jinpachi replied that the room was set up to find out the appropriate skills of a great striker. Then he said that the total amount of time any player spends on the ball in a 90-minute game is 136 seconds. Kira started to complain, but Jinpachi said he should have used the last second to survive. Jinpachi explained that in a real match he shouldn't give up at the last second, because a true striker could create a goal chance at any moment. Following this, he said that a true striker always shoulders the burden himself, like Isagi and Bachira, who chose the strongest in the room as their target. Finally, he said that Kira should leave Blue Lock, but he was angry with everyone in the room. He left the room, and Isagi wondered why he had decided to destroy Kira's soccer carer. After this, he asked Bachira why he had passed him, but he replied that he had believed in him. Suddenly, Jinpachi asked the strikers what they felt during the test. He said they need to remember that feeling to fight for survival, to become the best striker in the world. This is how they learned that they had passed the admission exam and Team Z was billed. In the following days, they got to know each other, and they had to train their bodies. Isagi realized during training with his teammates that they are all super athletic. After training, the strikers could get rice and miso soup from the cafeteria, but the side dish changes depending on their ranks. Igarashi was jealous of the others because people like Gagamaru was served dumplings. In the night, Isagi tried to sleep, but he was aware that he had to train to become stronger. On the way to the training room, Bachira appeared behind him. He decided to train with Isagi. Shortly after, he asked Bachira the reason why he passed him the ball. Bachira replied that a monster exists inside of him. Then we see Bachira playing soccer, and a teammate told him to pass the ball. Unfortunately, a monster told him not to pass, and he lost the ball. His teammates were angry, but he only listened to the monster's voice. Bachira explained to Isagi that a monster always talks to him when he plays soccer. Then he said that during the admission exam, the monster told him to pass the ball to Isagi. He realized that he also has a monster. Bachira said that Ronaldo and Messi also hear the voice of the monster, and he was happy to have met Isagi. Then Isagi's ego was awakened again and he attacked Bachira. Later, the ranks of the strikers changed, and Isagi was told that his rank also increased. Jinpachi appeared on the screen and he planned to tell them more information about Blue Lock. So they learned that this facility was divided into five buildings, and each team had already lost one person after the game of tag. They learned that they didn't move up in rank, and Team Z is the lowest ranked. In addition, he explained that higher ranked players get gourmet food because the rule here is that the best soccer player is king. Then we see Itoshi Sei, who was a genius midfielder in the academy of one of the world's top clubs. Reporter Jack thought he was planning to join the Japan national team. He replied that his dream is to win the Champions League and he has no interest in playing in Japan because the teams here are weak. Then he discovered an event organized by JFU that presented the Blue Lock Project. The reporters were not convinced by the project. But Henri said Japan must move forward, and in this moment, a hero of soccer will be born. In the meantime, the first selection began, and Team Z learned that they will compete against four teams. Jinpachi explained that only the top two teams will move on to the second selection. Jinpachi said that soccer was originally a sport all about scoring. For this reason, he told the strikers to create soccer from zero with their brains. After this, Jinpachi said that they don't need teamwork, and soccer only needs one hero. In the end, Henri and Jinpachi told them about the plan to create a hero with Blue Lock. Sei got curious, and he cancelled his flight to stay in Japan to see the results of Blue Lock. A short time later, 
Team Z was on his way to the first match, and Isagi was ready to take his future as a striker into his own hands. Following this started the match between Team X and Team Z. Team Z started the kickoff, and Bachira told his friend Isagi to let's have fun. Isagi wanted to climb the ranks, and he thought about how he could outplay his opponents. Suddenly Reiji appeared and took the ball from him. He replied that he doesn't care about team play, and he wants to do it on his own way. Kunigami agreed with him, and he took the ball from Reiji. As a result, Team Z started fighting for the ball, because everyone wanted to score. At that moment, Isagi remembered the words that they should create soccer from zero. Then Barrow appeared out of nowhere, and he was rushing towards the goal with the ball. Isagi tried to stop his opponent to score a goal, but he failed because he was a talented striker. No one could stop him, and Isagi was shocked by his abilities. He also scored a goal, and Team X took the lead. He said he was the king of the field. Afterwards, Quan said that they should play according to their plan, but Reiji started to complain about their strategy, because he wanted to score some goals. Team Z was still made up of selfish people, and Isagi knew they had to win against Barrow somehow. He knew he could only count on Bachira, but Igarashi had no plans to play according to plan. He wanted to score a goal and ran towards the opponent. Unfortunately, the ball was taken away from him, and Team Z started a counterattack. Team X noticed that their opponents were having a total meltdown, and they decided to win as a team. Team X tried to surround Barrow, but Barrow passed the ball to a teammate. As a result, no one could stop Team X, and they managed to score another goal. Isagi was aware that if they didn't become a team, they would lose the game. Then he realized that Barrow was the reason Team X stuck together. Isagi couldn't get Jinpachi's words out of his head, and wondered what he meant by creating soccer from zero. Meanwhile, Team X was scoring more and more goals together as a team, and Isagi thought that the match was game over. He thought that they couldn't catch up with Team X, and everyone was desperate. Suddenly Bachira said that they will lose the match but he could get a goal back with Isagi. Isagi decided to go along with Bachira's plan to turn their team's zero into a one. This is how Bachira and Isagi's attack began. Isagi immediately ran and tried to at least score a goal. Bachira distracted the opponents with his dribbling skills and passed the ball to Isagi. Then Isagi was planning to shoot the ball, but he sensed Barrow's dangerous aura. He was shocked to see Barrow in front of him and he had to decide if he would fit in with his teammates. Barrow tried to take the ball from him. At that moment, Isagi's ultimate ability awakened, and he could sense that he must pass the ball to Kunigami. He thanked Isagi, and Kunigami used his overwhelming strength to turn the zero into a one. Kunigami celebrated his goal, and Reiji was angry that the ball wasn't passed to him. Isagi replied that his body moved on its own, and he had no intention to pass the ball to anyone else. Then Kwan showed up, but Reiji was angry because at the end of the day, the top scorer can only win blue lock. Suddenly Baro appeared and he told Isagi that he has no talent as a striker. Additionally, Team Z lost the match and Isagi was frustrated. He asked himself if he was unfit to be a striker. Afterwards, Team Z discussed their strategy for the next game because they couldn't afford to lose again. Isagi remembered the harsh words Baro had said to him. He wondered why he passed the ball to Kunigami and what he needs to become a top striker. Following this, Kwan tried to calm Team Z down and explained the rules to them again. He said that they can't lose in the next game, or they'll be eliminated from Blue Lock. Suddenly, Kunigami said that he couldn't score without Bachira and Isagi. Bachira said the goal showed they can win. Afterwards, Chigiri agreed that the boys are right, and they can win. Isagi had an idea to solve their problem that all players wanted the striker position. However, Isagi explained to them that everyone wanted to score in today's game. He said that Baro's goal had united his team. Isagi also reminded Team Z about Jinpachi's words to create soccer from zero. Suddenly, Asahi asked why Jinpachi added the rule that the top scorer of each team automatically survives. Isagi replied that it was definitely so they could find the answer to create a team from scratch. Afterwards, Jinpachi showed up, and he told them about Team V's results. In addition, he began to explain to them what he meant, how to turn a zero into one. He explained to them that in every sport, players are assigned a position, but to turn zero into a one, players must evolve, so they learned that they should learn to destroy the opposing team in soccer. He said they need to figure out their weapons as strikers to dominate the field. At that moment, Isagi realized what Jinpachi meant to turn a zero into one, and they were excited for the next game. In the followed morning, Team Z told each other about their strengths in soccer. The reason for this was that they wanted to find out what special weapons they had. Isagi didn't know what special abilities he had, and Quan said he can tell him later. 
Then Shigiri was asked, but he didn't want to tell his teammates about his weapon. After learning about the weapons from the members of Team Z, they tried to come up with a plan to use all of the abilities in the next game. Later they started training to be able to apply their new strategy in the real game. They tried to stop arguing and planned to win the next game. At dinner, Isagi thought about Blue Lock, and he wondered what his weapon was. He was frustrated and thought that he didn't have any special ability like the other players. Suddenly Kunigami showed up at the cafeteria and he wanted to talk to him. Kunigami thanked Isagi for the pass in the last game. Before he went back, Isagi asked him why he started playing soccer. Isagi said that he was just curious and he replied that he is going to be a soccer superhero. Then he learned that Kunigami had admired strikers since childhood who scored goals like a hero. At that moment he decided that he wanted to become a hero like the strikers. This answer from Kunigami made Isagi realize what makes them different. Suddenly Kunigami offered to share his stake with Isagi. Isagi learned about the scoring system that strikers receive points from goals that they can trade for rewards. Following this Kunigami shared his stake and asked why Isagi chose to pass the ball to him on the last game. Isagi replied that he could smell that Kunigami could score a goal because he learned how powerful his mid-range shot was. Following this, Kunigami said that his power might be smelling chances to goal. Isagi was cheered up by Kunigami and he told Kunigami that he is a really nice guy. The next day, the game between Team Y and Team Z began. Kuan said that Team Y like them are desperate and they can't afford to lose in this game. Isagi was ready for the game and his team planned to implement Kuan's strategy by giving each striker the chance to use their weapon for 8 minutes. Lemon felt that rotating positions was dangerous and Shakiri agreed. They decided to stay in their positions and Team Z planned to rotate positions every 10 minutes. Following this the game started and Bachira's weapon was dribbling. He used his egoistic tactic to overwhelm the enemies. Suddenly he was covered by Nico and the opposing players. He passed back to Igarashi and Isagi was surprised by Team Y's countermeasures. But Isagi was sure that they can win, because they have eight more weapons. After ten minutes, they rotated and Kunigami began to attack. They gave Kunigami a chance to use his mid-range shot. His shot was blocked, and they were shocked. Afterwards, Isagi noticed that their opponents were not attacking, and he wondered what Okawa was planning to do. Kunigami's shot was blocked again, and Isagi realized that Okawa had been waiting for this moment. Nico passed the ball to her strongest striker on the team to start a counter-attack. Then Team Y's top scorer Okawa got the ball, and he was rushing towards the goal. He started to shoot and managed to score the first goal in the game. Isagi understood that everything was planned by Team Y, and they had to stop it before they could score more goals. Team Y celebrated their first goal, and Isagi's team started arguing. Kwan told his teammates to stop arguing, and it was his turn to reveal his weapon. Unfortunately, the ball was taken again by Team Y. Isagi noticed that the time was running out and their opponents were not attacking. Then Reiji's time came, but they failed to get the ball back. At halftime, Reiji was angry, and Team Z wondered how they could break through the defense. Kwan told them to stick to the plan because it would be far too risky to use a new strategy. Then the second half started, and Team Y was still playing defensively. Suddenly Imamura tried to imagine the ball as a girl in order to get it. Unfortunately, his attempt failed, and it was Gagamaru's turn to shine. After that, Gagamaru was able to win the ball back and he passed it to Isagi. Isagi passed the ball back to Gagamaru, and he reached the ball with his head. Unfortunately, his attack was blocked, and Isagi smelled a strong aura behind him. Reiji told Isagi that it is a corner and he should take position. At that moment, at that moment Isagi realized where the dangerous smell was coming from. He knew that the opponent had planned to concede a corner. But Isagi smelled the person with the dangerous aura and he was able to stop Nico's plan. After Isagi got the ball he tried to score a goal. His shot was blocked by Nico, but Gagamaru managed to score a goal with his insane abilities. He thanked Isagi for the pass and Team Z was happy about Gagamaru's goal. Meanwhile, Isagi said that he would no longer let Nico run freely on the field. Nico replied that he controls the game with his eyes and he has no chance against him. Then we see Naruhaya on the field and he was waiting for Isagi's pass. The opponents were able to intercept the ball, and Team Z tried to get the ball back. Isagi managed to see through the opposing team's moves and planned to use his new weapon. Suddenly Nico asked if they also heard Ego's speech about taking up your weapon. Nico said those words made him think. He said that there are many talented players in Blue Lock. Then he said that he is very smart, and Isagi can't stop his ideas in his mind. In the meantime, it was Igarashi's turn to shine but the opponents didn't let him get to the ball. 
Isagi continued to try to prevent Nico's combination play with Okawa. After this, Nico said that he planned to use their revenge tactic at the last minute to win. Okawa passed the ball to Nico and Isagi learned that the entire Y team planned to rush towards the goal. He didn't want to lose under any circumstances, and the monster in him started to grow. At that moment, Team Z tried to stop the opponents, but Nico was in front of the goal. Lemon thought it would be a one-on-one -on -one against Nico. Suddenly, he passed the ball to Okawa, who was already waiting for the ball. At the last moment, Isagi appeared, and he got the ball because he smelled the chance to score. He said that they were similar, and for these reasons he knew he wouldn't shoot. Isagi began to initiate the counterattack, and he planned to let go of the loser version of himself. That day Isagi was reborn and he took his first step into becoming a top striker. After that, Team Z used their weapons and Bachira dribbled his way through the opponents. He then passed to Gagamaru, and he missed the ball. The reason for this was that Bachira planned to pass the ball to Isagi from the start. Isagi was a real egoist, and he scored the goal that led to Team Z's victory. Afterwards, it was announced that time was up, and Team Z was happy about the victory. Isagi walked towards the opposing team, and realized that he had crushed the dreams of these 11 people. In that moment, he understood what it meant to win, and he realized that the feeling of defeating someone in a fight felt good. Later on, Team Z celebrated their victory in their second game. They shared their food with each other, and Gagamaru tried to stop Imamura so that he wouldn't eat the entire steak by himself. Suddenly, Isagi was asked how he knew where the ball would end up in the game. He told his friends that he could smell the goal chance, and Bachira tried to feed him. Team Z was impressed by Isagi, and they planned to do their best to survive in Blue Lock. In the evening, Isagi couldn't sleep because he was still excited about scoring a goal. Then he met Chigiri who couldn't sleep either. Chigiri was watching the footage, and he wasn't surprised that Isagi couldn't sleep. Afterwards, Isagi said that he will remember this moment forever, and he believes that he wouldn't be able to do it again. Suddenly Chigiri said that he has a very keen spatial awareness, and he explains to Isagi that most of the players on the field are focusing on the ball. Unlike he said that this skill helped him score the winning goal, and he just needs to learn how to use his weapon consistently. That's when Isagi realized that it wasn't luck, and he was surprised that Chigiri is also a nice guy. He then asked what weapon Chigiri has, and he replied that he didn't want to talk about it. Suddenly, Chigiri told him about his knee injury. Also, he learned that Chigiri dreamed of becoming the world's greatest striker too. He said if he injured himself in the same spot again, he would never be able to play soccer, and he joined the Blue Lock Project to give up on his dream. Meanwhile, Jinpachi was visited by Anri, and she was annoyed that he didn't clean his room. He replied that the contract said he don't have to do anything unrelated to soccer. Afterwards, she asked about the first selection process, and he replied that it's going real well. Later, we see Asagi, who missed the goal again. He took a break and thought about how he could use his spatial awareness skill in a match. Also, he thought about Chigiri's words, and he wanted to change. Suddenly, the screen turned on, and Jinpachi showed them the results. So Team Z learned that Team Fee was the strongest team. In addition, the ranks of the Team Z members changed, and Isagi was the top-ranked player. Jinpachi said that the first step was to find their weapons, and he told them the next step to make it stand out. This is how Team Z learned why the world-class player Messi is one of the top strikers in the world. He also said that everyone has different weapons, and so they have to create their own formula that will get them to the goal. They then learned that their next match starts in 24 hours, and Isagi thought about Jinpachi's words. He didn't know what Jinpachi meant by make it stand out, because he could only smell scoring chances. Suddenly he realized that he is always exhausted, and he planned to polish his physique. Kunigami said that he will train with him to catch up with Team Z's top-ranked player. Then Bachira showed up and said that the whole Team Z was running after him. The reason for this was that Isagi motivated them, and they wanted to catch up to Isagi as top striker. At that moment he remembered the day when he thought his future as a striker was over, but this time everything was different, and Isagi planned to become the best striker in Blue Lock. In the afternoon, Team Z looked at the results, and they learned that Team W couldn't afford to lose. They watched the footage, and Lemon said that the key players of Team W are the Wanima brothers. Lemon added that their foe is their combination play. Suddenly, Reiji asked why Lemon is in charge of this meeting. He replied that Quan isn't back from his bath yet. They wondered where Quan was because he had been gone for a long time. Suddenly, Quan appeared, and he said that he had lost track of time because he was thinking of a name for their new tactic. After this, he told them about his plan to rotate the players into three groups so they can shine even more on the field. But the name of the operation was lame and Gagamaru cheered Kwan up. 
Meanwhile, Isagi thanked Lemon for being the goalkeeper. As a result, their tactic was decided and Team Z was determined to win tomorrow's game against Team W. The following day, the game between Team Z and Team W started, and the Wanama brothers immediately stormed towards the opponent's goal. They got through Igarashi with ease, and Isagi didn't think they would get past Kunigami. Unfortunately, he was wrong, and the Wanima brothers showed that they are very skilled. So Isagi told Chigiri that they have to stop the Wanima brothers. Suddenly, the Wanima brothers called Chigiri the genius made of glass. They were surprised that he still plays soccer. Then they stormed past him and said that his time as a player is over. They made fun of him, but Isagi took the opportunity and took the ball from the opponent. Afterwards, Isagi said that he doesn't have to pay attention to them. Chigiri said that he should leave him alone. Meanwhile, Kuan scored a goal, and Team Z took the lead. Then Isagi said that he is not interested in his past, and he wants to see what he is in the present. A short time later the second kickoff began, and Junichi was dejected. He was distracted and the ball was taken away from him. Bachira dribbled his way through the opponents and he passed to Kwan. Suddenly Kwan decided to shoot and he scored a goal that surprised the players on the field. Kwan said he was at his best and Keniji tried to calm his brother down. Team Z was on the move and it was time for them to rotate. Suddenly Team Z was fouled by Junichi and Imamura laughed at him. As a result, Team Z got a free kick and Bachira realized that they were in bad shape. He passed the ball to Kwan and he scored his third goal. In the meantime, Jinpachi noticed that something was wrong. Then we see Team Z in the dressing room celebrating Kwan's goals, and they thought that they will easily win the game. Before the second half began, Isagi asked if Chigiri still planned to give up soccer. After that, the kickoff started and Reiji was motivated to score some goals. He passed the ball to Kwan, but the ball was immediately stolen from him. Isagi was surprised, but he tried to steal the ball back, but his attempt failed, and Chigiri was afraid to use his weapon. As a result, the Wanama brothers managed to score a goal. Following this, Kuan tried to calm Team Z down, and he passed to Isagi. Kainiji got the ball first, and he scored another goal. Suddenly, he asked for forgiveness, and Kunigami said that they should calm down, because there was no intention of passing the ball to the enemy. Meanwhile, Isagi noticed that Kuan was smiling, and he thought that he had just imagined it. After that, it was Isagi's group's turn to shine, and he aimed to score. He passed to Kunigami, and he noticed that he wasn't close enough to use his mid-range shot. Kunigami noticed that Bachira also had no options to use his weapon. As a result, he decided to pass back to Isagi, who had the entire field in his sight. At that moment, he realized that the opponents had figured out their plan, and he couldn't smell a goal. Suddenly the ball was stolen from him, and Isagi didn't want to admit that Kuan was a traitor. After that, Kuan got a chance to score a goal, and Isagi noticed he intentionally missed it. Team W scored their third goal, and Asagi asked him if he is a traitor. The Wanima brother replied that he was correct, and they said that Team W learned about Team Z's weapons and tactics through Kwan. Then the Wanima brothers said that it is game over for Team Z, and Asagi was shocked. Reiji was angry, and he replied that he was just trying to survive in Blue Lock. Reiji wasn't allowed to beat up Kwan because he would get a red card. Afterwards, Kwan switched sides and said that he will be the only one who will survive from Team Z. In the meantime, Henri was shocked about it, but Igo Jinpachi was excited to see what Team Z would do. Isagi asked why Kwan betrayed them, and he replied that during the last game, he realized that Team Z was weak, and they had no chance against Team V. So he decided to give up on winning as a team and focus on moving up alone. Suddenly, Kwan said the rules are that the top scorer on a team will survive, even if the entire team is eliminated. Kwan looked down on Isagi, and he said that naive players will not survive in blue lock. Team W caught up, and Kuan said it was game over for Team Z. Following this, the kickoff started and Team Z was angry with Kuan. Isagi had no intention of giving up, but the Wanama brother said that Kuan had told him about Team Z's abilities. Suddenly, Kuan appeared and he advised him to give up because they have no chance of winning. Team W charged towards the goal and Isagi hoped they didn't score. At that moment, Lemon blocked the ball. He said that they only need to tie to survive. Then Shigiri tried to get the ball but Keniji appeared in front of him and said that he would end his soccer career. Then Chigiri remembered when he joined the Rakasut High School soccer team. He told the Wanima brothers that he came to this school to make a name for himself. The Wanima brothers were angry at him, but they failed to stop Chigiri in soccer. Chigiri was favored by their coach and the Wanima brothers were jealous. At that time, 
Chigiri still had a lot of self-confidence because Chigiri was a talented soccer player. He was admired by everyone for his talent, and he planned to become a world-class striker. But one day, he injured his leg. A doctor told him that if he got injured again, he would never be able to play soccer. After that day, Chigiri's life changed, but he couldn't give up on his dream as a striker. The Wanima brothers made fun of Chigiri, and they looked down on him. A few weeks passed, and Chigiri returned to the team after his rehabilitation. But during training, he noticed something was wrong because he was afraid to sprint at full speed. He remembered that he always dreamed of becoming a top striker, but now he was afraid. Ever since then, he'd been looking for a way to give up. He thought that his dream will end in five minutes. Suddenly he heard Isagi's voice telling him that it wasn't over yet. Then we see Kunigami, who tried to steal the ball from the opponent with Reiji. The ball was passed to Isagi, and Keniji planned to stop him from scoring. As a result, he tried to use his special ability, but he couldn't smell a goal chance. Suddenly Kuan appeared behind him and he said that time is almost up. They only had three minutes left and Isagi didn't want that his dream of becoming a top striker to end there. He tried desperately to score, but the ball was stolen from him. At that moment, Chigiri wondered if he was a moron because he still hadn't given up. Then Isagi desperately tried to get the ball back. Chigiri wished Isagi would stop, but he managed to steal the ball and immediately passed it to Chigiri. Unfortunately, he was useless and Isagi pushed him away because he didn't plan to lose this game. Isagi's unwavering will reminded Chigiri of his old self, who never looked back and only pushed forward. Chigiri suddenly wondered what he was afraid of. He realized he had nothing to fear and he didn't plan on running away anymore. At that moment, Chigiri overcame his fear and the monster awakened within him. As a result, Chigiri was freed from his bonds and Chigiri was reborn as a striker. At the same time, Isagi smelled a goal and he was surprised to see Chigiri. Isagi's monster told him to pass the ball to Chigiri. After kicking the ball into the opponent's half, Team Z was confused because it looked like the opponents were getting the ball. At the last moment he got the ball and he left Kuan and Team W behind. A new top striker was born and no one managed to catch him. Chigiri charged towards the goal and he felt like he was reborn. He also remembered that the feeling he felt was like in his childhood when he started playing soccer. Chigiri's ego was fully awakened and he began to shoot the ball forward. Suddenly he ran, and Team W tried to stop him. Chigiri couldn't be stopped, and he ran faster and faster. Then he caught up to the pass that he hit. Chigiri scored a goal, and he was no longer about to give up on his dream of becoming the best striker in the world. He also equalized the game, and Chigiri was happy about his goal. Team Z was amazed by his goal, and Isagi told him that he was impressive. He replied that it was only thanks to Isagi that he didn't give up on his dream. Isagi was glad that Chigiri remembered his dream and wants to continue becoming a striker. The two became rivals and at the same time good friends. A short time later, Team Z showed up and complimented Chigiri for his insane goal. Meanwhile, Kwan was getting beaten up by Team W and they blamed Kwan for losing. Isagi and Kunigami intervened and said that it wasn't Kwan's fault that they lost. After the game, Isagi said sorry because he tried to score on his own, but Reiji cheered him up. Then they were on the way to the cafeteria, and Lemon told them to hold up. Quan tried to ally with Team V, but they weren't interested. They found him pathetic and had no intention of accepting his deal. Suddenly Nagi said that he was tired, and Ryo took him back to their room. Then we learned that Nagi only plays soccer out of boredom. Isagi was angry and told him not to underestimate soccer. Ryo asked who he is, and he replied that he is Isagi from Team Z. In the following day they learned that Match 9 ended in a draw, with Nico scoring the equalizer against Team W. As a result, Team Z was in third place, and they had to win against Team V to survive. Lemon then told Team Z about the key players from Team V. They learned about the three players who scored 18 goals in total. Isagi remembered Nagi, who he met in the cafeteria yesterday, and he really wanted to win against him. Then we see Nagi, and he left practice early to play video games. Zensetsu tried to convince him to go to training regularly, but Ryo replied that he doesn't need to practice. The reason why Ryo spoiled Nagi was because he was born into a smart and rich family. Ryo was always boring because he could have anything he wanted. He was good at sports and also at school. One day he was watching TV and he decided to win the World Cup. Unfortunately, his parents wanted him to become a top businessman, but he decided to become a striker. In the following days, he was at school. He knew that the soccer team at his school was weak. After class, Ryo bumped into Nagi and Nagi dropped his phone. At that moment, he saw Nagi, who had caught his phone with his foot. Then Ryo learned that Nagi is not interested in football, and he just wants to chill and do nothing for the rest of his life. 
Ryo remembered that his father said that only a chosen few get to go pro. He understood that Nagi was a chosen one, and he planned to play soccer with Nagi. Afterwards we see Asagi and his friends playing a game. Lemon said they still need to discuss a strategy for the next match. But Reiji was still angry with Kuan, and he wanted to beat him up. Isagi tried to stop him because they could only play against Team 5 with 11 people. Suddenly Kwan replied that he won't play because he will survive as the top scorer. Then Kunigami said that he will score 3 goals and he will be the top scorer in total with 4 goals. At that moment, Kwan said that he knew that soccer could only be played with 11 players. He said that in his previous team, he was the only person who aspired to become a pro. Then Bachira wondered what will happen if the top scorers are tied on goals. Jinpachi appeared on the screen and he explained to them that the top scorer with the highest ranking survives. After this, he said that Kuan has nothing to do with a real striker, and he told him that he is a loser because the world's best striker must be able to reproduce their goals. Jinpachi also said that players who score their goals by luck can never become top strikers. He explained to Team Z that in order to become a top striker, they need to analyze their goal conditions. As a result, with this knowledge, they could create a formula to score hundreds of goals. Isagi understood what Jinpachi meant, and Jinpachi said that it is time for them to evolve. The strikers were motivated, and Jinpachi wished them good luck in finding a goal formula. These words from Jinpachi made Isagi realize that he is still weak, and he needs to become stronger. As a result, he decided to go to the training area, and he was surprised to see Baro. Isagi asked Baro how he could become like him, but he decided to shoot him in his face. Also, he told him that he needs to use his brain. Baro wanted to show him why he is a top scorer, and he faced Isagi at one-on-one. -on -one. Isagi tried to stop Baro, but he scored a perfect goal in the top corner. Afterwards, Baro planned to leave, but Isagi provoked him. Baro replied that he is the king and attacked again. Suddenly, Baro used a feint and he scored another goal at the same spot. At that moment, he remembered Jinpachi's words, and he was sure that Isagi can stop King Baro this time. Baro looked down at Isagi, and he started running towards him. But Isagi's monster woke up from his sleep, and Isagi knew where he would shoot. However, Isagi tried to stop him with his weapon, and he knew how talented his opponent is. Isagi was sure he had figured out his goal formula, but Baro replied that he was wrong. At that moment, he scored a goal into the top corner from 27 meters away. Isagi was impressed by Baro, and he thanked him for teaching him. In the evening, Isagi couldn't sleep because he was thinking about how he could develop his own formula to score goals. He also realized that his soccer career might end in the match against Team V. Then, Isagi learned that he wasn't the only one who was nervous. All members of Team Z were aware that his soccer career could end. For this reason, Isagi planned to win to become the top striker. In the following day, they had developed a new strategy, and they had no intention of losing. Team Z headed to the final game, and they faced Team V. Then the kickoff began, and Isagi planned to stop Team V's attack. He marked Ryo to pass to left-footed speedster Zansetsu. Everything went according to plan, and Isagi was sure that they would get the chance to steal the ball. Afterwards, we see that Team Z's plan worked and Igamura was able to steal the ball. Bachira immediately rushed forward, and he combined his dribbling skills to pass the ball to Gagamaru. Then Gagamaru jumped and tried to score a goal, but he hit the crossbar. Team Z planned to attack again, and Ryo was impressed by Team Z. At that moment, Ryo felt anticipation, and he planned to try out a new move. He played a long pass to Nagi that a normal player couldn't accept. But Nagi got the ball, and Isagi was shocked by his control. He scored a goal with ease, and Isagi realized he is a monster. Meanwhile, Bachira also felt the pressure, and they planned to defeat Nagi. Igarashi tried to motivate Team Z, and he said that it was just luck. Then the kickoff for Team Z started, and Kunigami planned to reach his shooting range. At that moment, Ryo appeared out of nowhere, and he stopped Kunigami to get into his shooting range. The ball was stolen from him, and Ryo passed the ball to Nagi. As a result, Nagi scored with a bicycle kick and overwhelmed their opponents. They were desperate, and Asagi had no idea how to stop them. Meanwhile, Reiji blamed Kunigami for the ball being stolen. Isagi tried to calm them down and said that they can still win. Then they continued the game, and Isagi planned to use Chigiri's weapon in the next attack. But Zensetsu was faster than expected. However, Ryo got the ball, and Team Z tried to block Nagi. Ryo decided to pass the ball to speedster Zensetsu. He was in his territory, and he scored a third goal. Team Z got an emotional damage, and they intended to give up this game. Suddenly, Bachira said that he loved it, and he was happy that they were allowed to play against Team V. He complimented Team V's trio, 
and asked if Isagi was afraid of the opponents. He was very excited and said to Isagi that he is hyped up. In that one moment, Bachira's monster woke up and he planned to score a super special goal. The kickoff started and Bachira told Isagi that he just needs to watch him. Then Bachira rushed to the opponent's goal and he showed Ryo his powerful dribbling skills. Ryo thought he could stop him, but he was wrong. After that, Zensetsu faced Bachira in a one-on-one -on -one and wanted to steal the ball from him. Bachira used an air elastico and was able to win the fight. He was unstoppable and there were three players in front of him who stood between him and the goal. But Bachira was not afraid. But Bachira was not afraid and he said that they are here to become the world's best striker. As a result, Bachira scored a goal and everyone was shocked by his Rabona. Isagi felt his passion and also planned to go beyond his limits. Meanwhile, Ryo realized that they can't underestimate Team Z and Bachira smiled. Bachira managed to cheer up his teammates and they planned to go beyond their limits. Kunigami understood that their current goal formula wasn't working and they planned to evolve. We then see Ryo, who was annoyed that Team Z was hyped up and he wasn't planning on losing. Following this Isagi got a plan and he asked Reiji to manmark Ryo. He was angry because he can't score goals in defense. As a result, Reiji took out his frustration on Ryo. Ryo passed to Zansetsu, but Chigiri showed up and he had no intention of losing to him again. Suddenly Nagi got the ball and Igarashi managed to block his shot with his face. The ball landed to Bachira and Ryo wanted to stop him at all cost. He said that they will lose because Team Z is now awakened. As a result he passed the ball to Kunigami and Kunigami tried to score a goal. Suddenly Isagi told him that he needs to become a superhero and he understood what he mean. He planned to go beyond his limits to become a superhero, so he managed to evolve his goal formula and the goalkeeper was surprised that his shot got spin. no spin. At halftime, Isagi remembered Jinpachi's words that they needed to evolve their goal formula. He realized that it might be their last game, and he wondered how he could evolve his own weapon. Then we see Team Vi and Ryo plan to change their tactics for the second half. After that the kickoff began and Kunigami noticed that the opponents changed their tactic. He passed to Gagamaru, and he tried to score with a scorpion kick. Unfortunately, Zansetsu blocked it, and Isagi got the ball, but he was deep in thought and lost it. The reason for this was that he also wanted to evolve in this game like his awakened. friends. Suddenly, Nagi appeared, and he called him totally useless. Nagi wondered why they didn't give up even though they were playing at such a low level. Isagi got angry and replied that he will surpass him. In the meantime, Ryo was annoyed because Reiji was following him like a stalker. Then we see Jinpachi, and he asked if Anri knows what it means to awaken as a striker. He explained to her that when the strikers awaken, they find a puzzle piece that helps them evolve. At that moment, Isagi found the missing puzzle piece to go beyond his limits. Then we see Ryo, who was still trying to escape Reiji to create a chance for Nagi. Suddenly Reiji said that he will stop him at any cost, and he wouldn't allow them to score another goal. Reiji provoked him, and Ryo attacked him. As a result, Ryo got a yellow card, and Reiji said that Chigiri should go all out. Chigiri got the ball and Zansetsu faced him in a one-on-one. -on -one. The battle between the two speed stars started and Chigiri understood that they are different. He got an idea and tried to become a hero like Flash to defeat his opponent. Following this he kicked the ball forward and Chigiri knew that his opponent had fallen into his trap. He managed to reach the ball before Zansetsu and scored a goal. Kwan was shocked by the result because Team Z managed to score three goals. Suddenly he got angry and yelled at Ryo. He looked down on Kwan and had no intention of allowing Team Z to make a comeback win. After that he rushed forwards, but Reiji appeared in front of him and he said that he won't be able to defeat him. As a result, Ryo's passing opportunities were blocked, and he was aware of how dangerous Isagi was. He felt that Team Z had completely taken over the field. At that moment Ryo despaired, but Nagi's ego woke up. Isagi got a bad feeling, and Nagi evolved into an unstoppable soccer goat. Suddenly he rushed forward with the ball, and Igarashi was confused. He managed to outplay two players and pass the ball to Zensetsu. Zensetsu reached the ball before Chigiri and Team Z tried to stop them. Nagi told Zensetsu to pass the ball to him, and he made sure that the ball will land in front of the goal. Then we see that Nagi's ego was starting to evolve, and he never felt it before. He got the ball in the air and went beyond his limits. As a result, Nagi scored a goal, and Nagi thought soccer was fun. He discovered his ego, and Kwan hoped that he would be the only one from Team Z who would survive in Blue Lock. Meanwhile, Isagi realized that they are not the only ones who have awakened in this game. Team Z came up with a plan and they planned to strengthen the defense, but Reiji was against it and told them that they have to attack because they are strikers. 
everyone knew he was right and they were running out of time. Following this, the kickoff started and Isagi intended to score. He knew that he was not yet able to score goals. However, he realized that he was not the only person who wanted to survive in blue lock at all costs. Bachira told Shigiri to outrun him down the flank, but Zansetsu planned to stop him. They fight in a one-on-one, -on -one, and Shigiri was surprised to see Nagi in front of him. At the crucial moment, Isagi appeared, having already recognized the weak point. He passed the ball back to Chigiri and he thanked him. Then Chigiri rushed towards the goal and Chigiri's shot was blocked. Isagi knew it wasn't over yet and stayed calm. Following this, Gagamaru tried to score a goal, but his shot was blocked too. Everything went according to Isagi's plan, and he knew that Kunigami would manage to score a goal. After the goal, Isagi understood that he had found the missing puzzle to evolve his weapon. Isagi was hyped up, and he got the power to control the field. Meanwhile, Kwan remembered finding 11 members to form a soccer club. That's when he started playing football, and he was serious about winning. Unfortunately, his teammates weren't as ambitious as he was. One day they lost a game, and he realized that his teammates never intended to take soccer seriously. Then they told him that they will leave the soccer club because it's no fun anymore. As a result, Quan changed, and he decided never to make the same mistake again. Back in the present he felt the urge to support Team Z. He knew that Nagi is unpredictable, and that if Team Z loses, he will be the only one surviving. He really wanted to help them in the fight against Nagi, and asked himself why he felt this desire. Meanwhile, Team V tried to start a counter, and Chigiri planned to stop Zansetsu. He passed the ball to Nagi, but Isagi marked him. Isagi then used his spatial awareness skill to steal the ball. Unfortunately, Nagi's ego evolved and he was able to surpass Isagi. Isagi was desperate and Kwan felt he couldn't abandon his team. Before Nagi scored a goal, he was fouled by Kwan. As a result, Kwan received a red card and he would no longer survive if Team Z lose this game. Ryo was angry, but Zensetsu stopped him because otherwise he would also get a red card. Kunigami suddenly asked why he did that, even though it meant sacrificing his rank as the team's top striker. Isagi promised that they will win at any cost. They agreed with Isagi, and Team Z was motivated to defeat their opponents. But Team V's trio wasn't afraid of Team Z, and they planned to crush them. After that, Team V got a free kick and Reiji said that he will beat everyone up if they lose. Lemon wondered if Ryo would pass the ball to his teammates, but he remembered that they are in blue lock. His ego was awakened, and he managed to prevent the goal. Then Zensetsu tried to score, but Reiji appeared out of nowhere and blocked his shot. Suddenly, Nagi got the ball and Team Z desperately tried to protect the goal. At the last second, Gagamaru appeared and he saved Team Z from a disaster. Meanwhile, Kwan turned around and saw that Isagi got the ball. Isagi was aware that it was their last chance and he immediately started the counterattack. Suddenly, Ryo appeared and marked him, but he didn't intend to lose. He passed to Bachira so that he could dribble through the opponents. After being stopped, he passed back to Isagi. Isagi was in beast mode and passed the ball to Team Z's speedster. Suddenly Chigiri noticed that the opponents were wary of him, but everything went according to Isagi's plan. He passed the ball back to Isagi, and he had used Chigiri as a bait. Meanwhile, Kwan realized how wrong it was to betray his team. He regretted it, and planned to leave the past behind him from now on. Then Kwan started cheering on his friends, and he was sure that his friends will score a goal. Isagi smelled that the best chance was to pass the ball to Kunigami. Suddenly Zansetsu appeared, trying to stop Kunigami. Kunigami lost the ball, but Reiji appeared. He didn't intend to lose and save the ball so that it wouldn't go out. Isagi could smell where he had to go to score a goal. Bachira trusted Isagi because the monster in him said that Isagi will score a goal with this last shot. In this moment, Nagi appeared, and Isagi could no longer smell a chance to score. Nagi sensed that Isagi was the most dangerous person on the field. Isagi was desperate and he wondered if he would be able to get to the ball before Nagi. Isagi didn't want to lose, and he knew that if he didn't get the ball, it would be game over. At that moment, Isagi evolved, and he knew what he had to do to win. Isagi realized that he had to score the decisive goal himself, and that he needs to develop his own weapon. He remembered his abilities and was able to find the final puzzle to find his goal formula. Isagi transformed into a superhero, and he shot the ball into the goal. Then the goalkeeper tried to save his direct shot, but he was overwhelmed by Isagi's volley. Isagi was able to lead Team Z to victory, and he evolved as a striker. The result was 4-5 for Team Z, and the opponents were exhausted. Nagi didn't want to give up, but time was up and Team Z had won their last game. 
Nagi was frustrated because he had never experienced this feeling before. Meanwhile, Kunigami told Kuan to join them. Suddenly, Reiji appeared, still angry with Kuan, but he thanked him because without him they would have lost. Then he slapped Kuan in the face and said that despite everything, he will hate him for the rest of his life. Team Z forgave him, and Kunigami helped him get up. Then, they learned about the people who made it to the second selection. Team Z and Asagi were happy that they managed to survive. In the evening, Team Z planned to celebrate their victory. We then see Asagi and Bachira getting water for dinner. Suddenly, Bachira asked how he could score this amazing goal. Isagi told him that his spatial awareness wasn't working, but his desire to defeat a strong opponent led him to think about his previous goals. As a result, he managed to create a goal formula. Bachira was happy that Isagi evolved his ego and congratulated him. Following this, they heard the strikers who had to leave Blue Lock crying. Isagi realized that by winning, they had destroyed the dreams of others. Suddenly, Nico appeared, who had survived as the top scorer. He said that he is grateful to have met Isagi, because he awakened as a striker after his defeat. Besides, he didn't plan on losing the next fight against Isagi. Isagi replied that he is not afraid, and he will crush him. Back in the bedroom, Isagi and Bachira learned that their friends had fallen asleep. The following morning, Jinpachi explained to Team Z that they would undergo physical conditioning before the start of the second selection. However, the training of the strikers started immediately. Then we see how Team Z had to improve their stamina. Every day was very hard, and the strikers barely got time to rest. They were exhausted by the training schedule every day, and hoped it would end soon. After 10 hard days of intense strength and stamina training, the time had finally come. They were very excited, and they planned to crush their opponents on the second selection. Then Isagi realized that the people in the second stage looked familiar. Jinpachi appeared on the screen and explained to them that no players from other buildings existed because only Building 5 existed. The reason for this was that the strikers had to think they were at the bottom of the pile. Jinpachi planned to awaken their hunger to score so that they can become top strikers. He then told the strikers that the second selection consists of five stages. They also learned that if they pass the second section, they will take part in training with top players in the world. Following this, they found out that they have to go to the first stage alone. The reason for this was to sift out the trash, because only the true egoists will remain. A short time later, Itoshi Rin planned to go through the gate first. Suddenly he shot the ball into the air and everyone in the room was shocked by his abilities. He was warmed up and went through the gate. Everyone wondered if they could defeat such a monster. At that moment, Isagi tried to calm Igarashi and he said that they are monsters too. Team Z was motivated to destroy Rin and they said that they would become the top striker in Blue Lock. Nobody planned to lose and they were hyped up to pass the second selection. Then Isagi walked through the gate and he was grateful for the experience with Team Z. Arrived in the first stage, a ball was coming out of the wall. Also a dummy appeared and he wondered what was happening. He learned that the Blue Lock man served as the goalkeeper and he needs to score goals from the penalty area. Then Isagi started shooting and he thought that it is easy to score a goal. Following this, he learned that he had 90 minutes to score 100 goals. He had no intention of failing at this stage and was hyped up. A short time later, the second ball came flying. Isagi used his soccer skills and was able to score his first goal. During the time he spent in the first stage, he realized that the training was amazing. 30 minutes passed, Isagi reached level 2 and the difficulty was also increased. Isagi tried to score a goal, but it didn't work. He had to evolve, and the other strikers were also evolving in the training room. Meanwhile, Henri was worried because the blue lockman system cost a lot of money and they were almost out of funds. Jinpachi didn't care about it because he could see that the strikers are evolving. He knew that this time only the strongest strikers would survive, and he would come closer to his goal of creating a striker god. Then Isagi evolved again, and he was able to score goals. Henri was impressed by the blue lockman training because the strikers were evolving rapidly. A few minutes passed, and Isagi learned that he had reached level max. At that moment the dummies started moving, and Isagi had to evolve further to pass this stage. Jinpachi explained that the dummies move like top players at world level. The reason for this was that he had to push the players to their limits so that they could improve their skills. In the meantime, Isagi couldn't score anymore. He knew that he had always relied on his teammates, but he wanted to change. He tried to hit the ball from a different angle, but his attempt failed. Afterwards, Isagi tried to understand what he did wrong. At that moment he shot at the goal again and scored a corner goal. 
As a result, he created a new goal formula, and Isagi felt great. Meanwhile, as a result, Isagi managed 100 goals, and he moved on to the second stage. When he arrived in the second stage, he learned that he should form a team of three. Isagi noticed that Nagi and Ryo were already in the room. He suspected that they were waiting for Zansetsu. Afterwards, they planned to form a team with Kunigami or Chigiri. Since they could only choose one, they chose the first one to enter the room. Then Nagi showed up and wanted Isagi on his team. The reason for this was that he was interested in Isagi because he had awakened his ego. Isagi declined because he wanted to stay on a team with Bachira. At that moment, Nagi decided that he would join Isagi's team. They were surprised by this and Ryo felt betrayed by his friend. Nagi thanked him for teaching him soccer, but his ego told him to join Isagi's team. Ryo was shocked by this and said that he should do whatever he wants. A short time later, Isagi thought about it. He wanted to wait for his friends, but the monster in him wanted to play with Nagi too. As a result, Isagi's three-man team was formed, and they entered the gate to the third stage. On the way to the third stage, Bachira asked if he was a cold person. Nagi replied that he would miss Ryo, but he is more excited to join them because his ego told him so. When they arrived in the third stage, they met Rin. Jinpachi explained that in the third stage, they will experience battles of three on three. Then we see Kunigami, who has arrived in the second stage. Chigiri told him that Isagi and Bachira formed a team with Nagi. As a result, the two decided to form a team and defeat their friends for being left behind. In the meantime, Jinpachi explained the strikers about the mini-games in the third stage. They learned that they needed five goals to win. In addition, the winner can steal a player, and in order to pass the second selection, they must have a five-man team at the end. So Jinpachi told them that they are free to choose which team they battle. Isagi realized that this will give him the opportunity to get Chigiri or Kunigami on his team. A short time later, the strikers received a new rank. Jinpachi said that there are no fake rankings this time. At that moment, Isagi realized that this selection was a battle of stealing friends or rivals. Then we see Tokimitsu and he was very nervous because he was afraid of losing. Isagi realized that their opponents got very strange personalities. Suddenly Rin told them that he doesn't care who they play against. Then he said that the two of them are here to make up the numbers. Aryu started arguing with Rin. At that moment, he said that they are nothing but stepping stones for him. He also said that he is participating in Blue Lock to defeat his brother Sei. Isagi liked him and he knew which team he wanted to play against. Isagi was hyped up and his ego demanded to face Rin's team. As a result, he challenged Rin's team to a battle and Rin planned to crush them. Rin accepted his challenge and they opened with their fingerprints the gate to the third stage. Then they learned about the rules and both teams got a Blue Lockman as a goalkeeper. Isagi was excited and he planned to fight against the best strikers in Blue Lock to steal Rin. After that, the kickoff started and Tokimitsu was ordered to mark Bachira. Bachira used his dribbling skills and got past his opponent. Following this, he used a feint and passed the ball to his comrade Nagi. Aryu planned to stop him, but Nagi sensed that the best option to score was to pass the ball to Isagi. As a result, he scored a goal by using his direct shot. They celebrated his goal and he was sure that they will defeat their opponents with ease. Rin said that he got a picture of their skills. He talked down to them and was bored because of their low level. In this moment, they realized that something was wrong. After the kickoff began, he shot the ball into the goal and equalized. Isagi was shocked by his high soccer level and they understood that he is a real monster. After that, Rin explained them his view of soccer and said that for him, it is like fighting on the battlefield. Also, he looked down on them and said that they had no chance of winning. Isagi was hyped up and he planned to win the fight on the soccer battlefield. A few moments later, Bachira passed the ball to Nagi. Unfortunately, his pass was intercepted by Aryu, who could jump very high. He told Tokimitsu to pass the ball forward. Isagi managed to get the ball, but Aryu still managed to score. Isagi was shocked about this because he was shielding the ball. At that moment he realized that Aryu is also a monster and he apologized to his team. Bachira wasn't angry, and he intended to score a goal by using his dribbling skills. He rushed towards Tokimitsu, and his opponent became very nervous. Suddenly Tokimitsu zoned out, and he didn't want to be a burden to his team. Out of desperation, he charged at Bachira to steal the ball. Bachira thought he had avoided him, but he was wrong. He went crazy and tried to score a goal at all costs. Then Isagi tried to foul him, but he just ran past him. 
as a result, he scored the third goal for their team. In the meantime, Isagi understood that the weapons of the top three should not be underestimated. He thought they were going to lose and started to doubt himself. But Nagi was excited, and he promised that he would make the game more interesting. Then we see Rin's team, and Aryu wondered if they were having a strategy meeting. Nagi explained his plan to them, and Isagi wanted to support him. Suddenly, Nagi's monster woke up, and Bachira knew that it would be fun. A few moments later, Isagi looked at the opponents, and he knew that they can only win as a team. They created a triangle and planned to pass until they had a chance to score. So Nagi initiated his one-touch strategy, and they tried to confuse their opponents. Nagi planned to pass the ball to Isagi because of his ability to smell a goal. Suddenly Isagi ran out of the triangle, but Rin suspected his plan. Isagi was stopped by Rin and Bachira decided to pass the ball to Nagi. The reason why Bachira passed Nagi was because he knew that Nagi could do something interesting with his special pass. As a result, Nagi managed to score a goal with Bachira's great assist. Shortly afterwards, Nagi said that Bachira's pass felt great. Isagi was sure that the chemical reaction of the two strikers could lead them to victory. Suddenly Rin planned to teach them a lesson and tried to score. Isagi stopped him and blocked his shot. He managed to analyze Rin's movements and planned to control the field himself this time. Following this, Isagi calculated his options to predict Rin's movements and he planned to prevent his goal. Unfortunately, Rin's shot was far beyond his expectations and he scored another goal. They were shocked and Isagi didn't know why he couldn't stop him. Despite everything, Isagi's team had no intention of giving up. Isagi was aware of their situation and tried to create a chemical reaction. At that moment, Rin appeared behind him, and he looked down at Isagi. Isagi wanted to win against Rin at all costs, and he ordered Bachira to pass the ball to him. He thought he had defeated Rin, but Isagi learned that Rin had lured him into a trap. Then Isagi realized that Rin had predicted his moves and he was just playing with him. At that moment, Isagi understood that Rin was always two steps ahead, and he was incredibly impressed. Rin scored the goal that destroyed Isagi's team, but he felt no sadness. After the rivalry battle ended, Rin's team was allowed to steal one player. Tokimitsu suggested taking Bachira, and Aryu agreed with him. Before Bachira left the field, he said that he won't wait for Isagi if he doesn't come for him. Also, he said he only listens to the monster inside him. Later they were in the matchup room, and Nagi asked if he wanted to take a break. He replied that they don't have time to rest. Additionally, Isagi frustratedly said that he is not like Nagi. He was angry with himself for not having his own weapon like Bachira or Nagi. Suddenly Nagi got angry and told him to stop with this crap. Nagi made it clear to him that he wanted to form a team with him because he thought it would make him stronger. They started arguing, and Nagi said that Ryo would never behave like that. Isagi insulted him, and Nagi said that he can't do anything without Bachira. At that moment, Isagi decided to prove that he can fight without Bachira. Nagi thought that was the point of the second selection, and said that maybe their individuals will be tested in this selection. Nagi was able to cheer up Isagi, and he came back to his senses. A few seconds later, Baro appeared, and they were surprised to see him. Nagi challenged him, and he provoked him because the self-proclaimed king had lost. Following this, Naruhaya appeared in the room, and he explained that they must wait 24 hours before choosing a matchup. After that, they learned that Naruhaya's team lost because Baro was too selfish. Baro replied they lost because the other two were useless. Additionally, Baro told them that they can challenge him at any time. In the break room, he looked at the new function of the training room. Nagi then asked him why he didn't agree to fight Baro. He explained to him that both of their weapons only work by receiving passes. That's why they needed a plan but Isagi couldn't come up with an idea. The next morning, Nagi was depressed because he didn't like his side dishes. After that, Isagi looked at the new players in the room who arrived a few hours ago. He knew that they could only challenge strong teams to clear this selection. In the afternoon, he planned to get stronger because he needed to figure out how he can win a one-on-one -on -one against the top strikers. Then Naruhaya showed up and he told Isagi that he was nervous. He made it clear to Isagi that they were on the same boat because neither of them would be picked if they lose. At that moment, Isagi was frustrated because he knew Naruhaya was right. Then Isagi was challenged and Naruhaya planned to crush him. Isagi accepted the challenge and the matchup was confirmed. Later, Isagi trained with Nagi so that they could find a way to win against Baro. Nagi knew that they couldn't defeat him at their current levels. Isagi thought that the only way to figure out how to defeat him is by playing against him. As a result, Nagi decided to mark Baro in the upcoming match and Isagi replied that he would take care of Naruhaya. 
Then we see Baro and he told Naruhaya not to get in his way in the game tomorrow. The next day, Nagi asked Baro if he was ready to be crushed by him. Following this the kickoff started and Nagi planned to rush towards the goal. The king in the field immediately managed to steal the ball from the opponent. Isagi tried to stop Baro and was sure he could stop him. But Baro scored a goal because he had also evolved in blue lock. Isagi was surprised that his range was getting bigger, but he tried to find a solution to win. Isagi was marked by Naruhaya, and he didn't know what to do. At that moment Nagi evolved, and he told him to pass it. Baro looked down on Nagi and he underestimated his opponents. But Nagi knew how to defeat Baro. He remembered the experiences he had gained in the last games. As a result, he created a new goal formula, and he controlled the field like a god. Isagi was shocked by this, because he mastered his formula of how to win a one-on-one. -on -one. Then Baro's team attacked, and Nagi said that they have to press him. They knew that he would never pass the ball because Baro is the king. Everything went according to Nagi's plan, and Isagi passed the ball to his friend. Then the genius Nagi used his strongest weapon to crush his opponents. As a result, he managed to score a second goal in this matchup. Meanwhile, Baro was angry, and he started to evolve. He tried to score with a direct shot, but his attempt failed. Suddenly, Naruhaya appeared, and he supported Baro to score a goal. Isagi understood that he needs to evolve since Nagi and Baro are on the same level. Afterwards, Naruhaya revealed why he wanted to fight against Isagi's team. He knew about Isagi's weaknesses and planned to crush him with this knowledge. After that, the ball was taken away from Isagi, and Naruhaya evolved. He rushed towards the goal and tried to score. Unfortunately, Naruhaya missed his shot, but Baro didn't let their opponents to counter. Meanwhile, Isagi realized that he is the key to victory, and to win he must surpass Naruhaya. He was also annoyed, because Naruhaya was right about them being average Joes. He knew he needed a weapon to win in a one-on-one -on -one situation. For this reason, he planned to find his weapon in this match. Then the kickoff started and Asagi planned to evolve so that he was no longer an average Joe. Unfortunately, he couldn't find a way to surpass Naruhaya and pass the ball to Nagi. He was angry that he had to rely on Nagi, who used his soccer skills to equalize. Naruhaya was frustrated too and he wasn't about to let his soccer career end here. Isagi didn't intend to lose here either, and he tried to find the missing puzzle piece to his goal formula. Baro tried to score a goal, but Nagi prevented his attempt. Suddenly, Naruhaya appeared behind him, and he managed to steal the ball from Isagi. He wanted to score a goal, but Nagi put him under tremendous pressure. As a result, he passed to Baro, and he scored the fourth goal. Isagi was frustrated because he knew they couldn't allow any more goals. After that, Isagi wondered if he would have been able to stop him if Naruhaya had tried to score. In that one moment, Isagi understood that Naruhaya always positioned himself in Isagi's blind spot. Following this, the kickoff started, and Isagi planned to score a goal. Isagi remembered that Rin also taking advantage of his blind spot. Shortly afterwards, he passed the ball to Nagi and smiled. He had found the last piece of the puzzle and was trying to create a new goal formula. At that moment, he was reborn and Nagi managed to score a goal. After scoring, Nagi tried to talk to Isagi and he realized he wasn't listening. Nagi immediately noticed that Isagi was evolving and was sure that they would win. We then see the backstory of Naruhaya and his sister brought dumplings for dinner. Naruhaya knew that his younger siblings were unhappy about being poor and he always tried to cheer them up. Following this, we learn that Naruhaya's parents died in an accident. Naruhaya planned to become a pro soccer player to make a lot of money. The day he received an invitation to Blue Lock, he knew it was his last chance. Back in the present, Naruhaya looked at his good luck charm, and he didn't want to disappoint his siblings. Meanwhile, Nagi planned to stop Baro's usual shot. Naruhaya tried to convince Baro to change their strategy, but he was ignored. Suddenly, he shot into the top left corner of the goal, but the Blue Lock man was able to block it. Isagi and Naruhaya ran towards the ball, and Naruhaya noticed that Nagi is also on the way. Following this, Naruhaya decided to shoot at the goal himself, and he tried to copy Asagi's direct shot. He missed the goal, and Nagi was able to get the ball. At that moment, Isagi knew that he must acquire Naruhaya's weapon in order to win. Suddenly, Baro tried to mark him, but Isagi planned to take advantage of Baro's blind spot. He waited for his chance, and immediately positioned himself behind Baro as he looked for Nagi. Isagi managed to defeat Baro in a one-on-one, -on -one and evolved into the top striker. As a result, Naruhaya suffered emotional damage and he understood that Isagi had devoured him. This Naruhaya was frustrated and cried because his dream ended in this match. Then Isagi tried to cheer him up, and Naruhaya said he was wrong. 
Naruhaya said that Isagi proved in this match that he is not an average Joe. Additionally, Naruhaya said that Isagi is a genius who became the best version of himself in every match. Nagi asked who Isagi wanted to steal and he decided to pick Baro. Isagi wanted to apologize to Naruhaya, but he didn't want to be pitied. That day, Naruhaya's soccer career ended and his dream of becoming a top striker could no longer come true. Before Isagi left the room, he told Isagi to keep winning until the day he died. Then we see 24 hours earlier, Chigiri and Kunigami discovered Ryo. They planned to form a team with Ryo to crush Isagi. Back in the present, Isagi's team were in the break room and Isagi tried to stop his comrades from arguing. The reason for this was that both geniuses wanted the single bed. Baro wasn't about to let Nagi have the single bed, but Nagi attacked him with a pillow. Baro got angry and they started fighting. Isagi was annoyed by the two of them and he said that they were stirring up dust in the room. Suddenly, Baro ordered Isagi to ventilate the room and he learned that Baro is kinda meticulous. Afterwards, Nagi told him to eat a Snickers because he was acting like a maid. Meanwhile, Isagi understood that Baro is a person who has a clear idea of how he wants to lead his life. He admired him after realizing that Baro became such a monster by sticking to his rules. Later on, they were in the training room and Nagi wondered what Baro was doing. He did his daily physical training routine and said he would join them in 40 minutes. Suddenly, Isagi was hyped up and he decided to join Baro's daily routine. As a result, Nagi also decided to join them to become a top striker in Blue Lock. Then we see Anri, and she explained to the investors the purpose of the second selection. Most of them weren't interested in the Blue Lock project and just wanted to find a genius to make a lot of money. Jinpachi looked down at them and asked how many geniuses they have crushed so far. He explained that Japan only created temporary geniuses who were immediately crushed after failing to achieve results overseas. Afterwards, Jinpachi asked them what talent is, and he explained how he defines talent. In the end, Jinpachi made it clear to them that he will create a top striker at any cost. In the evening, Isagi and Nagi found out that Baro had taken the single bed. Isagi noticed that Maid Baro had cleaned up the place, so Nagi decided not to wake Baro up and he went to sleep. Meanwhile, Chigiri, Kunigami and Ryo tried to improve their teamwork. Then Chigiri wondered which stage Isagi's team is on. Ryo wasn't interested in Isagi because he only wanted revenge on Nagi. The next day, Isagi recalled the words of Naruhaya when he called him a genius of adaptability. Adaptability. At dinner, he wanted to learn more about Baro's playstyle so he could create a chemical reaction with him. Baro replied that Isagi should just pass the ball to him so that he can score. Suddenly Isagi told Baro that they can only win with teamwork. But Baro was only interested in himself because he was an arrogant egoist. Talking to Baro didn't help, and he left the room to take a bath. Later, Isagi spotted his friend Kunigami in the public bath, and the two were surprised by it. He told Kunigami that his team was crushed by Rin. Afterwards, Chigiri showed up, and Isagi was happy to see him. Then Isagi explained to his friends the reason why he didn't wait for them, and they understood him. Suddenly Baro appeared, and Nagi was scolded for doing nonsense in a public bath. Chigiri then asked Isagi who they wanted to play against next. At that moment, Ryo showed up, planning to play against Isagi's team. Nagi was happy to see his friend, but Ryo was angry at him and said that he will crush him. However, Isagi's team was challenged and he accepted it. In the followed morning, they brainstormed a strategy. Isagi learned that Nagi and Baro don't get along and he decided to be the key man of their team. Then Isagi was asked why he had accepted the challenge. He replied that he planned to steal speedster Chigiri from the opponents. But Baro was against his decision because he preferred to have Kunigami, who got a mid-range shot as a weapon. Suddenly Nagi said that he would choose Ryo. Since they didn't agree, they decided to focus on the upcoming match first. In the meantime, their opponents also developed a strategy. Ryo planned to mark Isagi because he wanted to prove Nagi that he had made the wrong choice. As a result, Kunigami decided to mark Baro, and Chigiri should mark Nagi. Afterwards they talked about the player they wanted to steal and they didn't agree either. We then see Aryu and Tokimitsu trying to arrange a matchup. Unfortunately, no one wanted to play against their team because they were all afraid of being crushed. Tokimitsu was worried, but Bachira was sure that Isagi will catch up. Following this, Isagi's team's match against Ryo's team started and no one intended to lose in this game. A few moments later, Kunigami planned of dethroning Baro. Baro got angry and he tried to get through to Kunigami with full force. force. Meanwhile, Isagi noticed that something was wrong. The reason for this was that Kunigami stopped Baro from getting into his shot range. Isagi ordered him to pass the ball, but Baro refused. 
At that moment, Ryo showed up, and he was hyped up to crush his opponents. Ryo took advantage of Isagi's team's weakness and ran towards the ball. He managed to steal the ball from Baro, and Isagi was shocked. Then two strong strikers ran towards Isagi. Isagi thought that Kunigami would try to score, but the ball was passed to Chigiri. Nagi had marked Chigiri and he said that he will stop Chigiri. Suddenly, Chigiri increased his speed and left Nagi behind. Then we see Chigiri in front of the goal and he scored the first goal of the match.